Hello everybody, welcome back to Figure City Gaming Podcast with Bob, JPY, Jen, and myself. How is everybody doing today? Doing all right, thank you. So, everybody Good. enjoying the, the new chapter? Like Hell I yeah. <laughs> um but we were gonna start we have some pretty good news the other day on the fact that we're gonna be able to do house tours in the new update um that's gonna be interesting gonna get a lot of the housing aficionados you know in in their in their thing so i thought that was pretty cool but um we we're gonna go back to the roots of why it's awesome for this new chapter to have come out for the newer players because there's a lot of cool things that are in the game that just makes the game a little bit more playable um single player and in group content um bob do you want to start what do you want me to talk about the new chapter <laughs> No, I know. Bob's been uh, taking a little bit of a break, um, but uh, uh, I'm sure he likes the new chapter. Um, it took me a second to, you know, to decide to buy it, and, and I'm I'm happy I bought it. It um, I wasn't sure if scribing was Worth gonna it? bring back some uh, some enjoyment, so it was good. I um, I do like how they introduced the scribing like it's not i mean it's it's a grind but it's only a couple it's only like the first time you do it it's like an hour grind right and then yeah. you, and then you have scribing done um or you can start collecting you know the scraps and stuff yeah um so that was good so it's not like it's a you know month-long grind like in tokyo these was to get it like all the way leveled up so that you can get the good stuff um it's now it's just a grind that you have to collect it which is fine I mean, that's, they have to have a grind in there somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I, I mean the, the zone looks beautiful. I haven't done a ton in the zone yet. I'm trying to, you know, slowly work through kind of the, the story because i got to catch up a little bit. But um, uh, it, the, zone, the zone's beautiful, and, and I think scribing is going to be good for the game. I'm interested to see what they do in the future going forward like what other skills they're gonna let us mess with now speaking of story i know jen has a uh, spoiler alert i guess jen i know you mm -hmm. like the story um yeah i I've haven't quested the story i yeah, finished i haven't done the story yet but i'm okay with the spoiler here but spoiler alert everybody so if jen wants spoiler to spoiler alert if you haven't finished the story tune out now <laughs> <laughs> i am fully on the side of the Daedric Prince Athelia and she has been done so dirty. Mora is a big old bully. <laughs> I've actually come across um the the Daedric Prince in like side quests and such. You that, will, uh, you'll meet her. Like yeah. she's wandering the lands in person. Yeah. She's lost and confused. Mm. She's uh she's gaining her powers back. She's been let out of her prison, which uh was Mora's creation. And I won't spoil the ending. I'm just going to say that she's been done dirty. And I was not very pleased with the ending, but the quest was fun. Now for the next thing, I know JPY has been doing so many things in this new chapter. He's been farming. He's been striving. He's been testing out new stuff. JP, tell us tell us more about that. Mm, he, he, well, as far as like the, the scribing stuff goes yeah like Zoss was pretty like all the the preview stuff like it's not game changing or game breaking for sure but i will say like as bob kind of touched on dot 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 yes <laughs> is what i will say because there is some uh there's some potential there um i feel like i mean for someone like me that likes to try to figure stuff out and see what's best and min max it's been fun um trying different different things um trying to figure it out there's a few things that i think are um very strong um the mages guild ability the ulfnard thing that that ability with the shield for healers and and you know tanks can do the eight percent mitigation that's something we never had before it is a very big shield i mean we were testing it last night on a tank and i can hit my shield and it's getting full health bar 
like on because it's fifty percent of my max health as a tank, and then she just gets a massive shield. So I'm sure they're gonna make adjustments to it. I mean, I'm I'm sure there are, and I mean Bob said it as well that they're probably well, gonna bring in new stuff too. So well, no, I'm not saying new stuff. I mean like adjustments to these original spells mm-hmm. because me hitting one skill that's not on a GCD, FYI, and giving Jen a full health bar of shield because it scales from my health, mm-hmm. not like the fifty five percent. Yeah, I, I expect that part some... is surprising to me because they've always been very against like full shields. They've always had like shield. Yeah, it's an oversight. They have the ability right now to fully shield. So that that that's it's it's like a it's like an oversight. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, on, um, uh, yeah. On their on their fault on them, I think because that that ability is very very strong. I also think that it has potential um, in certain situations as a back bar flex on a uh, DPS if you need, because you can go double heal minor resolve, which is pretty strong. Um, it may not in, you know, vigor, vigor is pretty strong, but it, you're talking like, here's the thing though, like a well, vigor cast, what is like every two seconds or whatever it takes. So double heal, you get two ticks, give yourself your resolve, which your vigor would give you as well. But the, the thing is, is like, it, it's a, probably a little bit stronger because Vigor does tick pretty hard, like as a defensive skill on a, uh, a DPS back bar flex. But it's also a mage's guild, so you, you gather a little extra magicka. So you, like, your, your Vigor passive, your, your assault passive, or whatever, it doesn't, whatever the line that Vigor in does nothing in PvE. So having a mage's guild passive on your back bar or whatever is also, I think, like, if you're getting really, like, Min maxi, technically, if you're gonna slot out like camo hunter, is gonna be better. You know, like mm-hmm. if you're gonna put like a flex defensive skill for doing portals or whatever the other stuff that DPS is. So there's there's definitely some niche situations there, um, potentially. Uh, I think it's worth it, but like, and I'm just excited to see what they do down the road. Plus, like purple wall. Makes me feel like I do more damage, even though I'm not fucking adding damage. Oh my damage. god, that is <laughs> actually... colors are definitely the game changer. Listen, the purple healing springs last night, Jen, was beautiful OP. on the screen. It was, oh, it that's... was OP. It was so soothing. You can see it, and you know, yeah, I know. I'm like more aware now, even as it yeah. like tanks. Tanks, I'm sure, are pretty aware of like where hots are on the ground part of tanking, but as like a a pleb DPS, I don't really pay attention to those things, but I definitely notice them like now. <laughs> it's cool. That's like one of the best. I'm things sure I just I feel like a better could. healer because yeah. I have different colored springs, mm-hmm. mutagen, and combat prayer. <laughs> yeah, they probably should have brought that um a bit before the scribing, but I mean it's never too late. Like it's so good to see cool things like that affect like your gameplay. And as far as, like, the shield thing, I think the reason that Sauce has been kind of weird in the past about giving people, like, full bar shields or whatnot is because of PvP and not necessarily PvE. So I think as long as we're okay in PvP-wise, which um, we might not see a lot of that until they bring the PvP update at the end of the year because PvP's been kind of dead. Like, the other day I went into... Uh, black reach to do questing and such and blues were nowhere to be found and when i asked where dc was they're like oh they're in gray host yeah there's like three bars you know all across the board in gray host but it's only one campaign out of the four that is like heavily populated so hopefully we'll get more pvpers and that's when i think you'll see more of like people i guess stomping their feet because oh you have a full you know bar but you have to be in a group to do it anyway so i mean they've always been able to separate now what skills do separately in pvp oh, wow. by yeah i just i just got my first bind on by putting the uh, serial on their phone it i just got my first bind on um pick up like a saleable um script like i just okay. picked one up off a of random trash mob mm-hmm. so like it can i can sell it <laughs> it's the shitty p it's the shitty pvp one though <laughs> yeah but Speaking those of PvP. <laughs> those those are i mean they're money um and that's that's cool that the game has been able to give us like the new players a way to make some really good money because even if it's like the crappy pvp 
somebody who says I have to have this right now is going to overpay. Um, well, you need it to do the yeah. to do the rest of the achievement yeah. to unlock some of those pretty yeah. skills. So people will exactly. They they'll pay for it. Um, like the other day, I sold the one of the new patterns, and there is a farming place at the inn in the new uh, in Westfield where you can just go in and out of the door. And it resets the instance. So you can just go farm the cabinets in there. Um, so it's a little bit of a less of a grind than some of the other spots. But I got like the the large beehive um, purple pattern. And it sold for like 500, 600k. It was insane. I'm like, why can people just not wait? <laughs> but there's, there's good ways to make some money. And, you know, the new skills look pretty 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 yeah the animations on all the new skills are super crazy cool looking too like the bond one changes mm -hmm. color the tether does depending on like what affixes you have to it, attach to it mm -hmm. cool. exactly but... speaking of the pages that we pick up um i have been farming most of them on my main uh my templar so far i wish that they would be more in the like either collected or not collected tool tip. Um, I have a bunch sitting in my bank right now and I'm honestly not sure if I'm eating doubles. It, it'll say it. It'll say it. It'll say it. Says it. It, on the bottom. it says it on the bottom. You have learned a script. I know that. It'll say learn. If you know it, it'll say learned. If it doesn't say anything, you can eat it. Yeah. But. I farmed a bunch. But yeah, yeah I, make a I guess. Grip it, mule. <laughs> I guess um, um, it makes sense to to do something you know like to make it a little bit more knowledgeable that you have that script i guess kind of like what the motifs right jen yeah like the gold page motifs like you know you can't even read it if you already know it it's like you can't accidentally consume it yeah it, that's the same way with the scripts but i agree jen a, a list would be nice of you know what do i what do i already know or mm -hmm. on this uh, account yeah or this tune Tune. yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not... Make a script mule. That's all I can say. Make one tune that can mule all of them and bank them and give them to other tunes for certain things that you want to use on that yep. specific tune. Yeah, I know one of uh, the healers in the European server said that she made a uh, a script mule that learned everything but the healing ones. And then she was just giving each of those to like each of her healers yeah because it's curated mm -hmm. so she's always going to get those and then yep. you don't eat it it's just like yep. doing carries for gear and then you exactly. just give it to the other if you have a healer that you can do it with the dps ones or mm -hmm. whatever you want that's the best strat yeah that is that is the best way um she said she spent about a like a week trying to to do that just to kind of get it up um with you know the dailies and such and then after that like it was just mainly like Oh, when I'm gonna have the RNG to get like these specific ones, so yeah, it's so not she always get healer yeah. script, always yeah. drop. Them. It's not like that hard of a grind um, compared to other grinds that we have had before, um, but it is a grind, and you have to have a grind in this game, otherwise people just get bored. Sorry, yeah. but it, you gotta have it. It's never gonna be a game where you can log on and like exactly. pick up the thing you need right away. Exactly. You have um, to do a little bit of legwork. No, with scribing, you have the the inks. The inks have been pretty easy to obtain. I know JPY has been getting <laughs> them um, in his farming spot nonstop. But Jen, I really do think you should probably submit a ticket because um, you should have gotten one by now. So if you're not getting inks from nodes and you have like really outdone your node, you know gathering i guess um i would definitely submit a ticket and see if they're making yeah and going. she has everything unlocked too she has all yeah. the account wide like unlocked the so, indrake the, yeah. all the dragon so yeah whatever. Make, i don't know which one yeah make sure you have the the specific wing that you need to to get the node drops and then you have all the you know master harvester um whatever you need plentiful harvest to, to, yeah you know to get the the correct um chance i guess of getting the node um, I mean, I, I don't know what else other than that, um, besides just submitting a ticket and maybe seeing if there is a bug with, uh, a character of yours or, you know, if something's happening. But, uh, as far as scribing, 
I see the inks in the 5 to 10k in the future per ink um, just because of the drop rate um, JP <laughs> you probably agree okay we've been that. talking about this and I only just now got my first no, two it's... inks oh. it just worked oh it does work <laughs> this whole time we've been talking I have been picking up nodes in uh, Betnik yeah. you'll get three really quick you'll get another one and then the next one it's going to be like It'll be a while before you get it again. Yeah. So this isn't the first time I've run around picking up nodes like crazy, but this is definitely the first time. Like, it's so funny that we just talked about that and then they finally popped. It's like, oh, they know they're onto us. Let's give her one. <laughs> so Jen's two just sucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I just have the worst RNG ever probably. Oh, you're going to get them all the time now. I okay. swear to you. Like, that's what happened to me too. For like, you know, I grinded the shit out of the two tunes like right away full all the whole mm -hmm. quest line on two tunes like for all the ink and i couldn't get one and then literally like and then they just days, started pouring like, in four four days later yeah now it'll be like a daily thing i i know there's like some kind of hidden cool down where it's like it'll give you one like right away i find the rune stones have the better like i've gotten more off of rune stones i know it's random but I, now that you say i think that was actually a rune stone that it you know when on. you grab when you grab rune stones there's multiple things that drop like you know how there's all the aspects different types of runes yeah i think it's a chance per aspect to fill that slot so you have a better chance off of rune stone oh because of the, lo the loot tables on the yes, nodes yeah, yes know? because yes. each node on a rune stone will drop multiple there's like three different things. things in them yes and you will have a greater chance on those I think I, I'm only speculating, but that's. I mean, I've got them off everything. A butterfly gave me one once. A water. I mean, thing, it, it makes thingy. it makes sense as far as but, cause like um, there's a couple of people that are farmers that I've talked to in the past about the loot tables that are in each individual stuff, and they said yes, there's a different loot table for like an urn than a backpack, and depending on like you know how many loot table components are in that specific you know mm -hmm. thing that you're trying to pick um it gives you a better chance to pick up like specific stuff yeah so like when you grab a ruin stone there's three or four different tables mm -hmm. per one because you get like ah uh, like the main aspect yeah. so i think those are probably better like more efficient um so like everyone runs around and grabs all the other stuff and i just i don't know i i don't know 100 it's not 100 percent. i'd have to like been hours trying it just grabbing rune stones only and seeing how many i could get but i think it might be a thing could yeah. be a myth too um I know. I know that merc said that craglorn was really good for to to go like you know hunting for for ink um and that was during the event the senator event so i'm not sure like how good the nodes will respawn um past that no, event. it's good no, but yeah, no, you do have a chance to get an urn crux, which potent urn is like 20k at the moment, um, like anywhere 18 to 20k. So like that's not a bad thing if you're wanting to like get the most grind out of your, um, you know, node farming. Then craglore might be the better um, thing. Yeah. But if not, the you know the the starter islands, uh, Betnik, I know it's really good for uh, for flowers. So there's too many bots there. Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's bots in Strauss Mackay too, but um, there's oh yeah, there's a bunch of bots here. I'm, yeah. I'm running in between them right now. Yeah, Betnik, there's tons of bots. Yeah. Um, the other thing about Craglorn as well is like grab the chest, and if you get like an MK piece, MK jewelry or whatever, I'm sure that stuff still. Yeah, sells. or if not, like yeah. just learn it, you know. Well, yeah, no, I know that's like another option though, because like there's a lot of chests around there. Mm -hmm. You can get like MK to sell as well. Yeah, make sure you're fully geared for, you know, to, to go farm like that. Make sure you have the, the Sigic chest glowy thing if you're going to go into Craglorn and just utilize that to the best of your advantage. Um, and, I mean, it helps to to go and uh, and just roam around Craglorn. That's, that's what I've done before, and that's what I did when I was farming in the European server trying to get some money, I just ran around Craglorn and picked up every freaking note I saw. And then the chest, you know, to, to get my martial knowledge um, pieces for over there. So it's not a bad way to, to do it. Um, have you have you guys had a chance to do the new trial? Um, we as a team in, in, in the guild have not on vet because we're still working on Griffinheart. 
but um, we will be doing that after Griffin Heart to get uh, our tanks geared up. But have you guys actually done Vet um, Lucent yet? I know JP has. I've only run it on normal uh, one time so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, I keep seeing the um, the pug groups popping for them, mm -hmm. but it was like the the week that it came out, and I was pretty focused on yeah, doing my doing the quest. quest. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very good trial. I like it. Um, it definitely when they said that it's between Rock Robe and um, Dread Sail, they were correct. I think it's a little bit easier than Rock Robe as far as like the ads and some of the stuff that's in there. But as far as mechanics, I really do think it's in the middle. It's between Rock Grove and Dread Sail. Because it depends on the burn. Those trash pulls can be bad if there's not I mean, if you have a high DPS group, they can yeah. stack everything, but a lot of those ads are pretty complex. I could see like lower damage or less optimized groups like struggling with those ad pulls. But yeah, and then obviously the flying the wisp frog is always mm -hmm. fun. There's always at least three people yeah. that can't fly the wisp. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I do. I will jump in a normal one just because I want practice climb flying the wisp. Like I want to be mm -hmm. good as good as hell at that shit. <laughs> no, it, I I actually like that trial a lot. It it reminds me a lot of Vimo actually. Um, not necessarily in the aspect of like how easy it is to do Vimo now, but like back in the day when it wasn't easy and you had to really focus on the mechanics. And you had to do certain things like that brought that back and I was so happy about that because I said okay this gives me DLC vibes you know when Mob Lorcosh dropped and we were doing stuff like this but um, obviously the burn was nowhere near the same burn it is now so it's a little bit better but the first boss the way that you have to like change the the room and such you know get on the pad you have to look to the other side to see which pad is lit up to go to that pad on your side to go change to the other side it's it's actually pretty cool I yeah do, and then I you, like when that. you get de when you get debuffed running out to like debuff the other mm -hmm. like ads on your side of the room yep. to like make it so the tank can change them in yep. pretty fun. yeah the the if you have a light on you you basically have to go to the ads so they don't get uh because if you don't put the light on the ads, they, you can't kill them. So, they're immune. Yeah, no, they're fun, immune. So it's that, gorgeous. Yeah. It's so beautiful in there. I love that trial. Um, I'm super excited to, you know, when we finish GH, like, to go in there. Because I think we're going to have a really, really fun time running that trial. Better than when we ran Red Sail. And um, <laughs> we lost two tanks <laughs> and a DPS. Oh, man. Those are fun times, though. Um. I know, uh, Bob, have you had a chance to, to look at the new trial at all? What do you think? Uh, not really, but I mean, everybody that I've talked to, you know, has talked about just exactly what you guys have said. It, 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 love the mechanics, love the look of it. Um, we're really happy with with the design of the, of the trial, so I'm excited to see get my first look at it eventually yeah whoever designed this trial sauce like keep them because they did such a really good job um making it to where it's just hard enough to where like you have to do stuff um but also easy enough to where like the i guess the average pveers um in an endgame content are able to like get through it um you know within like two hours so you don't want to make like the prog like a super prog but um you're able to running the knot running the knot out is intense at the end. that is the most intense like mm -hmm. and it what outside of like obviously like i don't know i felt like that was more intense than you know being 36 out of 36 with like 10, 10 mil left on a boss and a oh, trifecta yeah. run. That shit is intense. And it's like, <laughs> it's like fun as hell though. Like I, I'm like addicted to it. Like the adrenaline, like you finish that thing and I'm like, God damn, why am I breathing hard? I'm not physically running IRL or anything, but it feels like you're fucking running. <laughs> you're <literally laughs> dragging that knot out of there. Since you're drilling up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so fun. So I'm like, I, I would I find do that it wild though. that uh, I'd ask JP cause I hadn't run it bet yet. 
that once you've killed the last boss and you have to run the knot all the way back to the lobby, which is basically like that's a brand new thing in the game. The yeah. lobby's always been a safe zone, but now it becomes part of the trial. Yeah. Um, so you have to run it all the way back. And he's like, well, we, we died a couple times doing that. I was like, oh yeah, so we killed the boss twice. Just, <laughs> so you just have to like go back and like pick it up again. He's like, no, you start over. You start the fight over. I was like, holy, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. intense. So I could see how intense that was. Imagine you finished the last boss and you were thirty six out of thirty six, and then you still had to run the knot. <laughs> yeah, no, well, because like you have to go through a choke point, and it depends on like how it goes. So normally it's like blowing up, and it's you have to get out and then pick it back up again. Yeah, but it's glitch glitch straight now so like if you actually die holding it it looks like you still have it mm-hmm. and the mechanic is people have to stand in it to get you to move well yeah. we got to the end of it and obviously like it's a pretty recoverable fight there are certain points where if you die you're not going to recover even in that run it's recoverable like you can res and like keep pushing forward if your damage is like high enough to keep up with like everything but the problem is at the end when multiple people have died with it, you can't pick it up for like another two minutes and it looks like you have it. So we're sitting there going, who is the real knot? Cause it's glitched right now. Right. So there's like th- four people that have the knot AOE and you're like, well, who do I stand in? And then if you're taking damage, I think someone said you can't put it on the altar. Yeah. And obviously if people have been dying, like mm-hmm. there's multiple ads, the crystal, like crystal atro guys come out and they're nasty. Yep. And like, you didn't know who to stack on for the real knot. So the real person couldn't like move. I don't think they even knew. Cause it's like three people all clicking to like pick it up. Cause you're all like panicking. Right. We mm, wiped like, we literally like, died, that, we yeah. died twice, like right there at that end. It was so like killed the boss, did Zorn, like did all his nonsense. Like, Traded the knot off in there, and then just to like think it's over with at the end, it's like don't ever take that part for granted at the end. Like, I, I like that. Yeah. Bring, bring in some PvP scroll running. Uh huh. Yeah, that's exactly it. That is, that is it's literally so it. Fun. It's like PvE version of that, Bob. Like it's insane and in how fun and so cool because your team has it. There, you get a rush. You really do get a rush. Like JP is right. There is a rush in that. Um, you're like, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta do this fast, fast, fast. Like that is how you're like you're going in that fight. And it's it's super fun. Um yeah. I I didn't we didn't die, but we had people that died with a thing. And so I did see the double bubble thing that is bugged. But we were able to get through it because um, you know, only one person died, so there was only like two bubbles instead of like three or four. So. Yeah, that's what happened. The the time we cleared it, no one died. Yeah. So it was very easy to see. We figured it out. But it's like, you think you're done. You're like, all right, we've been running this thing for 10 minutes now. We have to be done. And then you're like, oh, wait, nope, going to fight this boss again in the mirror room. It's like mini recap. Then you're running again. You're like, okay, this has to be done. And then you're like, oh, now these nope. dumbass necromancers spawn. Yep. And they're the tiniest little ad. It's the, I think it's the first ad in ESO. Normally, general rule, big guy, big ads nasty you're gonna do lots of damage these little tiny necromancers there's like 15 of them goodness they fear and they have so much health like it looks like you could just flail i'm like you look at them you're like oh shit let me uh flail and beam that thing it should die you look they have like tons of health and they constantly fear you yep so that Mm -hmm. that fears people out of the map i was like the first one to get clapped by something that didn't look like it was that dangerous yeah i love it they switched it up to like trick us the yeah. necromancer phase on the not run is, is, is insane nasty. you have to it's worse kill than the last boss you have yeah it's to worse kill than them. the last boss yeah like as soon as you see a necro like you have to yell out like necro 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 and like people have to just kill them th- suckers yeah they fear they have to die they have to yeah. die quickly um one thing that um like the 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 light bringers are pretty cool as well in there because you have to you, kill them to get their buff yeah you they, have to they, kill them to get their buff and i think they bring ads back from do they i don't know yeah i think so i think they do bring ads back in in the mix i cannot remember because we didn't really see that mechanic but i did hear that ads came back and um there's times that the ads come from another room did you see that at all yeah the run- yeah so they they'll come, run across there. Yeah. yeah, they'll come back from the other room that you have cleared it. So you're like, where are these ads coming from? Oh, from the other room that you thought you cleared. There's ads in there still because they came back. Um, it's 
I think it's one of the best trials that Cinemax has ever put in this game. And like I said, they made it to where it's just good enough to where an average like group of PvE and gamers can get it done within like a two three hour span if they don't know like all the mechanics you know if they're working through it yeah v like well vdsr is like a pug killer like people can't get past the first exactly. boss like this one is is doable with mm -hmm. like a pickup group it's yeah, recoverable you, know, you can rest you can yeah. you can res your way like yep. through this trial there's like one phase one part probably where you're not going to get reses and that's when there's a hundred necros out and you're running yeah. with them now yeah. Like you don't you try to res and you're just gonna get perma and, like tiered. So and I think you can't um, nuke them. That's the only part that's not really recoverable. It is, but it's really hard. And it I is. think once you get into a specific room, like if you go like two rooms over or whatnot, the the res people actually travel with you. So they like spawn they get like sucked in, I guess, into the instance, you know? So they spawn in the group and you can res them at you know, at certain points when you're give, taking the knot back. Um, and such but um, the the only really big mechanic heavy fight was the mirror ones where you have to switch the mirrors between light and dark and towards the end of that fight you have like I think it's six mirrors in the room and you have to like eight or eight so like all the DPS have to get a mirror um, it's six and then I think they two people have to go and change it again I don't know it's yeah. It's, it's hold everyone by the end. Yeah, it's, it can get overwhelming if you don't switch out mm -hmm. ads in like good timing, and you have like one that's invulnerable too long. Yeah, that's really the only boss fight in there that is a little bit heavier in the concept of like just mechanic heavy, and you have to do things correct in order to get finish. But other than that, I think the trial is perfectly fine for a lot of um, for a lot of people. To, to complete it like i said you don't have to be you know god slayer group whatever dot 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 um it's it's easier than dread sale 100 it's easier than dread mm. sale um mechanic wise it, it, it is it is because like jen said the first boss in dread sale like if you have people that cannot do mechanics very well like that fight is hard where, yeah, last mm -hmm. boss too, I guess too. Yeah. Getting in the water is pretty yeah. difficult. For people. So like it really yes, there is there are and mechanics. Yeah, there are mechanics that will wipe people in there. Um, you know, like the mirror boss mechanic, but it's a little bit more uh forgivable than Dread Sail is. As far as um some mechanics, most of the mechanics. Yeah, nothing there. that is really gonna like one shot the whole team in one go. It, yeah, the, the mirror boss is the only one. Not picking the knot up at the end, Well, yeah. if you leave it on the... It starts pulsing and does, like, lots of damage, but that's pretty yeah. simple. There's nothing like, okay, look for your debuff and get in the water and then get back out and then heal to... Like, yeah, it's a lot easier. You know, just pretty basic. It's pretty straightforward. Don't let that knot sit on the ground for more than, like, a couple <laughs> seconds, especially if there's a lot of... Ad, it's a lot of damage. It pulses pretty hard. So here's, here's another question. Um just from seeing what has come out in in this chapter and the direction that cinemax has taken with the game um you know like doing uh cosmetics like nice cosmetics for actual like gameplay where you don't have to go you know trifecta for a skin or whatnot um you can like, just do the main quest and you getting a skin for that uh stuff like that and the mounts and such but what does Cinemax do next? Like, can they top this, do you think? Um, Bob, let's start with you. Do you think that they can top what they've done with this chapter? I don't, I mean, <clears throat> okay. So, I do, I do like how they took the Necrom story, right? They, mm -hmm. they took us back to an old place, Necrom. And, uh, you know, Hameas Mora, you know, made everybody forget. And then that led us into Gold Road, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're doing that story of the prince, you know, that we forgot. So they have this open forum to write whatever they want to write. 
it doesn't have to follow exactly the ESO or, you know, the Elder Scrolls um, lore and timeline because we're in a forgotten time, remember? Mm -hmm. that Going back from very yeah. base game. We're in a forgotten time. So they can write whatever they want to write. And so I think for the writing part of it anyway, I, you know, I don't think they necessarily have to top it, but just keep this kind of, you know, flow going that they have okay. going right now. I, I, I think they... I think they had a little bit of a lull there, you know. Um, High Isle wasn't great for me story-wise, you know, and and I think they brought that around. Um, Trial-wise, I, <clears throat> you know, these last couple of trials, Sanity's Edge is is very mechanic-heavy, and then this new trial sounds like it's got some mechanics, but it's not quite as, you know, wipe the whole group if you. Yeah you know, mess something up, but, you know, they just need to kind of keep on this, this kind of track. Um, I, I think they've done great. And so if they keep the staff that they have, I, I, I'm excited to see what they come out with, with the next chapter and see what they do. JP, what do you think? Do you think they can, they can top that and like add to what Bob was saying? Um, yeah, I feel like we're in this pattern, though, of, like, every other trial is good. I mean, I enjoyed Dreadfield. I don't like Sanity's Edge. A lot of people like, don't like Sanity's Edge. Like, but... I don't, I'm not, it's not, like, terrible, terrible, but I just, I don't enjoy it. I think it's a lot of uh, visual vomit mm -hmm. with the amount. It's just they over, they overdid it. Sometimes keeping things, like, difficult and simple, like, I mean, I'm not saying it needs to be easy, but just the, the sheer amount of physical, of just vomit that is literally on your screen on the last boss and then, you know, making everyone run a maze and all that stuff is like, I don't know. I think it's, uh, I'm not a fan. So if you follow that pattern, I enjoyed Dreadsale. Then you go to Sanity's Edge, didn't like. Then I like this one. So I'm not, I'm not a fool. I think next year's like chapter trial will, will be probably be vomit i don't know or maybe they just figured it out maybe bob maybe they did figure it out now they found the right balance of like power and difficulty i just i don't know i mean i like to enjoy the the trial like while i'm in there i like to feel like immersed and you definitely feel immersed like in recent city i feel immersed in like um in dread sale too because mm -hmm. obviously like the mini bosses it's not as linear you can go this way or go that way so it, i mean i get it it all leads to the same place that movement through there and like being on like the boardwalk going down to fight Tulare and stuff, I feel like that's really immersive for me. Sandy's the edge, Trinity's Edge is not immersive like at all. It's like you go to a portal and you're in some shitty like dream, like it's just stupid. But like, and then this one, I also feel like immersed. I even feel immersed like in VCR, like you're in the Coliseum, dude. Like, <laughs> let's go. You know, like that's how I feel. I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, they definitely, if they found like, their level of where they need to be um i guess it all depends on like the reviews and the feedback they get from them so i guess it's on us to like keep the train going you know yeah tell them how much we like this one jen what but, do you yeah. think oh uh, well your question is like how will they top it and i don't necessarily think they need to top it i think this chapter was like a lot of quality the the zone length was good the quality of the the visuals and the feel of the zone all like meshed well together um the the trial was a great length and had like a lot to do with like the story of the zone so this this whole area was quality and they, that's it's like if they keep doing that they deliver quality like that's what people are appreciating um in regards to like what could they do next with trials we've had three big mechanic trials delivered so far that what i think they'll do next is uh we haven't had a new arena trial in a while something like in and out like asylum sanctorium oh okay so, so they've given us a lot of like big trials where you have to run through groups of ads and then do your bosses and then another group of ads and then a boss and like you're kind of like questing your trial um after so many of those i feel like we probably are due for a new arena one. Oh, so you think it's gonna be like, um, maybe like cloud rest wise or asylum 
something like that. True, yeah, they could do, yeah, because that's not necessarily as, um, like, in and out as, uh, like, a sanctorium is, so something, something where, yeah, you just walk through the door, you're right into your boss fight, and you could choose to make it harder or not. I wonder if they do go that route, um, like, how will they do it? Because, like, VCR is so fun. Because there's, it's very mechanic heavy and it's very unforgivable for, you know, if you make a mistake, especially in hard mode, like, you're, you're dead. Um, in some way, shape, or form, like, it's very hard for teams to recover as we have figured that out, um, doing our Griffin Heart prog. So I could see that. I mean, even in Asylum, like, if you don't do mechanics, it, it, it is hard for you to come back through that, um. Now, I don't know if they want to do that, though, Jen, because do they want to make the trials like that to where they're... I mean, traversing the child's trials in itself, the big ones, is part of the challenge. Like, you know, yeah. if you're on a no-death speedrun trifecta, anything like that, then the pacing to get from, like, section to section and how you do the mm -hmm. pulls is part of the fight. Yeah. Which, like... Yeah. I absolutely agree. That's that's more fun to me than than an arena trial, but then the arena trials are also a nice break too because those of us that don't have a lot of like movement speed and stand bars take forever to like run between <laughs> ad groups and keep up with the group is part of my struggle. <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, like the the topping that I was saying, like how they can top it. Um. I really do think the the base the best way to top this is to. Like, keep going and keep making the rewards better uh, and better and better for, for like, doing basic content of the game. Um, yeah, you have to sell crown crates. I get it. Like, they're cool and all. And there's always going to be people that, you know, something new, ooh, shiny, I have to have it. And we know players that they literally buy crown crates until they get everything. Like, including all the Apex mounts and such. So, the Crown Gems is good for that. But, um, I mean, if they give, you know, maybe, like, a mount um, for the new trial. Like, let's say they do another arena trial. And they do, like, a mount for just clearing it on regular vet. And then have it to where, like, if you do the, the hard mode... Um, the speed run and the no death, adding something to that mount to commemorate that you've done that. Wouldn't that be cool to to have something like that? Like you get a mount that you can add certain concepts of if you do specific things in the game, and then like if you do the trifecta, obviously like it's something you know different from the other three. Um, or like a skin or a costume or something like that. I don't know. That's, that's something that I was thinking about, um, on how they can, I guess, top things. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Like, I know it's I, super weird, but. I kind of want to see ho uh, a housing item like they did with, with Sunspire, Sunspire, with the statues, mm -hmm. especially since you can now put your house yes on like a tour or whatever yes. in the new patch so you could show off you don't even have to be in game and you can show off your you know That's your stuff fun. now that would yeah. be cool um the the only thing though bob is that i was so disappointed in sunspire when i like i saw that you do get statues for the first two um dragons but now the third one I was so disappointed because I was like, oh, you know, I got to get my statues. I got to get my statues. And you only Please have to don't be. Out. Yeah, but like, that's not a housing item. So, like, they literally went from housing items to a mount. Um, if you're going to do something like that, just do do it all three, you know? Um, and then maybe do the mount for, for the, the trifecta. Um, I like I like that. Um, if they do come back t and it makes sense, it would make sense since they did add, um, this, uh, new update that you will be able to put your housing on, on a tour. House listings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found it funny. I did watch a video where they said, oh, well, there's 
nothing in the update for us because we already had this with an add-on so we're not that excited um the person announcing that forgot that there's a whole bunch of players who don't play on pc with add-ons that like this is brand new to us we've never had a housing listing before where we didn't have to be online to do housing tours or we didn't have to make it our primary yeah it was the same thing with combat timers you remember that jen when they introduced combat timers for us mm. on console like pc already had it so they're like oh it's you know we've we've had this yeah guys like not all of us play pc sorry yeah you and know. they're definitely like they're following along with what uh, the quality of life items they're making that like if if pc is using it as an add-on that if it's so popular it's going to become a quality of life update mm -hmm. for us so yeah they're really not getting anything but their add-on already was something that the developer themselves gave them it was something else they were using to you know make their game easier outside of what the developer made it made it to be well, I can tell you this, that, you know, the chance that I get to talk to one of the developers that I'm going to mention for them to, like, either change the way they do the writs to where, like, once you submit your writ, you know, in the, in the little box or whatever, you know, you get a pouch, right? Well, inside that pouch, you get, you know, like, tempering alloy and then, like, a couple of stuff. And you have a chance to get the, the craftable writs. And then you have a chance to get like a shipment of like ingots. Well, why not just freaking add that shipment of ingots? Like either take that shipment of ingots and like not have it to where we have to like reopen the thing and just put it into that um, and make it to where we can just open like select. You know how you can fast decom? Yeah, how they recently yeah. like gave us the quality of life in like collecting your daily hireling. Yeah. Like in the mail, you just click on the button it all collects yeah there is a bug um, in that though so be careful um the if you do that and then collect sold listings the money won't show up but once you like i think if if you travel or um if you like take money out of your bank or put money back in like on a bank or whatever it does show up so be careful with that Oh, interesting when you're doing that yeah try it out like it does show up like the the money does show it up it comes out eventually yeah. yeah it does show up if you like either deposit or withdraw money from like a bank thing um or if you travel in a loading screen so it will show up but yeah i'm no stranger to that from not normally playing with eso plus that when i had to have those free weekends in order to get everything to automatically go into the craft bag you had to travel yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man you need eso plus jen i know i know it's it's rough but you like I, to play i them. do have a three-month subscription right now thank you to a kind soul oh mm -hmm. oh <laughs> but so i mean what else um what else do you guys want to see like in the future from from just just a pure uh quality of life point um bob what what would you like to see in the future just to wrap this up. Um, I mean, I, I just want to see the servers finally, you know, get a little bit better. I know every time we get a, a, a patch drop, there's always a little, <clears throat> you know, some kind of little thing with the server, mm -hmm. people getting dropped from the game and, and that kind of stuff. It's been better, though, than... It's been better. It's been better recently, but yeah, I do agree with you. All right, uh, what about you, JP? Mm. He's got... Quality of life? Yeah. Like, right. anything. So, this is going to sound toxic. Me and Bob were kind of talking about this before. <laughs> Oh, so, God. I'm tired of doing random dungeons with, like, the tank that just then gets in and, like, AFKs. Like, after you press X on the queue. Mm -hmm. Like, literally had a guy just sit there. I don't know if they're, like, afraid of the dungeon, but it's, like, if you queued up for something, like, you should probably, like, take your queue. I get, like, stuff happens. Then, like, you know, obviously, like, I get emergencies, like, real life, whatever. Maybe they had to leave or whatever, but... I just think there should be a penalty for stuff like that, you know, like if you're going to queue up or fake tanking or you get so many like, cause that stuff is like really annoying and 
the thing is, is what people don't understand is like, yeah, a lot of the newer dungeons and stuff, you can get away, you can just run through, you don't need a tank, I get it. But I also remember when I was a newer player and I wasn't geared out and didn't have like the ability. So that person's like first experience in Spindle Clutch 1 is going to be a nightmare. You know, the first dungeon yeah. they went into or their first vet like dungeon is going to be a nightmare when, you know, the source just streaks ahead all the way to the end and he's pulling you into the bosses. There should be some sort of like report feature or like where the group can report that person and then guess what no more d random dungeons for you for a week or some sort of penalty like that like where you're taken out of that queue or um like some other games do they put you in a lower priority queue with other people who want to do that kind of stuff so then you can deal with it but i just think it makes the game it's like a really obviously i can deal with it because I'm a big boy, but there's a lot of people that can't, and I think that turns people off to PVE as well. Like, oh, okay. you know, if that's your first taste of PVE is uh, some, some night blade stealthing past every boss and, like, pulling you in, and you're just constantly dead 100 times, how is that good for anybody? It's no, literally it's not. not. It's not. It's not good. So no, they need to take, yeah. like, it, the, I, I cannot stand the tough guy solo build player that queues up in a four-man dungeon. Like, yeah, I can do it, too. Like, I can make it an unkillable build, and I can go do that. And I, I get it if you enjoy doing that stuff by yourself, then go do it by yourself. But you get reported for that, or there should be, like, a direct, like, a, an AI feature where it knows that that person is doing that. And just, like, literally give them a warning, however you want to do it, two warnings, and you're out, or whatever. But that's a really bad experience, and it, I think it literally ruins, like, the potential for people to get into PVE. So I, I would love to see some sort of penalty for that, like in the game, honestly. Oh. I, I can handle it. It's, there's a lot of people that can't though. And it's very like frustrating. I do like the like, low priority queue idea that you have. I think that's probably like the better start point. Where... Oh yeah, you got like, a, you're, yeah. you're, you're waiting like instead of eight minutes or six, it's 30. And if yeah. you keep doing it, it it's, it's a day or whatever. Yeah. Like, I know they, they'll never do it though, because like, Again, they want people to buy crowns and stuff, but what they don't have, they don't understand like the direct impact that that makes on other future crown sales down the road. If you turn someone off to like PVE or anything like that because they have to yeah. deal with it, plus it's annoying for everybody else. But I feel like there's another fix to that. You could make it like put more doors in the passageways, and you cannot progress through any dungeon until yeah, like every ad before neat. it is dead. I'm sure it's all in their mapping though. When they lay a dungeon out, there's a set like map or set code set a code i'm sure that would be a headache i, I think it would yeah. be easier to like put in a, a ban or i mean they already have a cooldown timer now like, yeah make like, it like a 16 minute cool timer the first time um account wide no account wide oh, account not wide. not yeah not character wide okay so account, me... account wide lower priority uh thing yeah, yeah then... because like all those people do is they just go on it like they okay cool i'm on an eight minute timer i just log on another tune and do it do the same thing like over and over again i've i've played with the same person queued up like three times in a row i swear to god it was the same person on like different tunes <laughs> like multiple times in a row because they just they just account hop just make it account wide and actually like start penalizing people because it is bad for people and it's bad for the game in the long run it really is no one wants to deal with that oh that's fair i mean it, it i hope they do it because that that would make the that experience a little bit more enjoyable for sure um for certain players and like you're right that might actually attract future crowns uh buyers you know from from being in the game if you don't do something about that um jen what what about you what do you think would be good quality of life i need to take my gear sets out of my storage boxes and put them on a dummy and use my store bo storage boxes for other stuff so i want those little straw dummies you see all over the place to wear my gear sets and I can walk up and if I look at it, it's like, this is your SPC set, this is your OLO set. Oh, on a dummy? That's mm -hmm. cool. That would be cool, actually. They they have it in, they had it in Skyrim so they know, yeah. I know they can do it because you used to be able to put yep. your armor on mm -hmm. dummies in Skyrim I'll, in yeah, your house. Yeah, I'll make one of my rooms in my houses, like my my wardrobe, and it's just all lined with dummies wearing all my sets, and I can just walk up and see exactly where all my sets are, rather than and, searching through my boxes. And for then them. what you can do is you can take the kind of like the armory builds, I guess, um, but take that, I guess, make it a like a poor man's armory um, where you can 
like with with the sets you can walk up to it and say okay i'm gonna equip this set like equip this specific uh specific thing yeah like it like takes you to like your character screen or something you say okay i want to equip like the the chest legs waist boots right well i was gonna say like it just equips everything that's on that dummy so like if you have that like the, right the so if dummy... you only wanted to store five pieces just store the five pieces yeah. so it'll be like mm -hmm. a poor man's armory basically um where it doesn't affect the armory at all but you can't do like your CP or like your you know vampire bites or like your skill or whatever. It's yeah. just for the Cuz the armory is great, but it only works when like you carry around all those sets. Yeah. I don't carry them. I have to like throw them all in a storage box and then like log off that tune and then get on the tune I do need it on and you know find it all in the storage box. It's, it's, oh, I did mean, I forget a piece? Log that tune off, log the other one back in. <laughs> you'd not be a pleb and then just uh, craft, you know, different sets for different healers. <laughs> like I do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, don't do that. That that it gets very expensive. Yeah. That then gets... again, and then again, like you as a normally non ESO player, you're not walking around with a whole lot of inventory space. So I don't yeah, but then there's like a like hundred sets on every single tune. Yeah, it takes <laughs> up too many slots. I have it on yeah. some of my DPS, but it's still like that's a huge waste yeah. of slots. Like on your team. Oh, I agree. I agree. I'm just saying, like, don't do that. That's like, yeah. that's only if you can afford it. Like that solves i guess a little bit of the problem but it doesn't solve the overall um yeah one quality of life that i want to see come to this game and they have it on pc already so why not just do it on console let us use the damn armory assistant mid-trial yeah. Pay to win, pay to win, pay to win, it's, pay to win. It's not pay to win. It's not pay to Then make the damn armory assistant free. Or, like, put it behind a freaking quest or something. Like, make it to where you can... You lose all that monetization for armory slots? Hell no. Like, are you kidding me? I mean, it's not necessarily pay to win, though. Like, you really just need... Like they already no, give us a couple it. free slots. How many slots do you need in one go? Exactly. Like you could, you could have it to. Win. Oh, they they use a lot. Like they they for do wardrobe on, on PC, on dude. PC, it's like yeah. I've seen five different gear setups, dude. Like this room is this. This trash pool is this. This boss fight is this DP. Like that's just DPS. Like yeah. doing it. There's they do use a lot for like yeah, that. Yeah, but, but you can condense it a little bit with console, you know? To I don't even think it's pay to, I'm just yeah, trolling. It's not pay to win goals. anyways, because you still have to farm the gear yeah. and understand how to set up your character mm -hmm. and figure out what sets are more most optimal for this trash pool to switch to this boss. That's not pay to win. There's a lot of strategy behind it. It's not like you push a button and it's going to give you the most optimal set like on your tune. That would be pay to win, right? I yeah, automatically I'm not had saying... the most optimal setup. You, and... don't, you still have to farm all the yeah. gear and spend the time in to get it. I'm like... not saying to, to be able to do it in the middle of combat because I know some of them are able to do it in the middle of combat. Um, but, you know, have it to where for Rock Rope, for example, you know, the trash pool, you, you have... You start with the trash pool setup, and then when you get to, to Oaks, um, that last pool before Oaks, you have, I don't know, a healer or a tank or whatever, pull their armory assistant as soon as the fight is over, everybody goes to that specific spot the tank is at, changes the gear, go into Oaks, kill Oaks, do the same thing, and then, you know, just go. Like, you can do that um pc is doing it why not let us do it you know their thing changes automatically some of their add-ons it just knows when you go in the room they no i know but i'm not talking about like to that extent but like you we have the armory assistant there and it's just a waste of like potential to not let us do that um wait till like let us not be in combat for it you know to be able to be targeted um, that's fine. You can do that, but just let us do that. Like, why not? It's there, you know, change the code. Let us do that. Um, I get it, but it's, it's something that it needs to come to console because we get frustrated on, you know, we could do, we could do the ad pools a lot faster. I mean, can't, can we not, JP? Like, if you have... Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, 
when it comes to the very sweaty yeah. end game community that wants to score push or do trifectas and such, like it's gonna help those people, and it can even help, you know, the the pro groups as well because they're gonna be if they set up their shit correctly, it's gonna help them get through the ad pools a lot faster. Um, Not pay to win if you farm the gear and put the time in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I so, farmed. I farmed all that shit. I spent the hundreds of hours yeah. to farm all that gear, the money to upgrade it, all that stuff. How to figuring out the loadout, setting up my loadout. Like that's not that's far from pay to win. Yeah. But I know that I was just playing the devil's advocate. No, but here's here's the thing. Give us two armory slot, like two more armory slots, or even one more is fine. Like just give us one more free, um, and put the armory assistant where you can buy it if you want to, um, or you can do this big quest line to get it. That way, it's not necessarily pay to win because you could still quest to get this assistant. Um, but if you don't, you know, you can in a way it is pay to win to, to get the assistant, but it's not. Um, I don't know, I just feel like that is something that is very doable, and I'm surprised Sauce has not done that yet. Maybe it's just something that. I guess they can keep it the way that it is, just make it usable and fun. Yeah, exactly. Like have it to no. where you don't you have to be out of combat to do it. Um, but you know, the tank or the healer, you know, when you're nearing the end of a pool, they hit the you know, like the the little wheel thing and pop him out. And then to talk to him you obviously have to be out of combat. So and then just do go like gear set blah 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 let's go it's gonna help more people than than people think it's not just gonna be the the end gamers like it will help some prog groups um and this might actually like have them come in and start talking to some other people about like helping them set up you know trash pool gear or whatnot so but Anyways, this is this is all the time we have, guys. Um, you know, thank you for listening. If you have like any suggestions on you know what quality of life stuff you want to see, if we um, if you think Sauce will be able to top this chapter with anything, if you like the new trial, um, or just like general questions for us, like we'll be happy to answer them. Um, I know Jen likes to to be team. Uh, Team Daedric Princess, so I'm sure she'll she'll answer that spoiler for you if you ask her. But um, yeah, thank you guys for listening, and yeah, have a good uh, have a good day. <laughs>